Well, hello, everyone. Um, I have, you can see the pictures there, but I have actually the, the copies of, this was my very first one. It's 12 tales, it's 12 fairy tales that I, that I did. And then this is my second one, and this is my steampunk world of Laurentia. And uh, I wrote little stories for that. And this is the second one in the Laurentia series uh, where my husband wrote the stories, and he's, he's right there. <laughs> I contributed. He contributed. Um, I am currently doing um, my current Kickstarter. Uh, it goes until March 22nd, 2019. Uh, it's Witches at Work, and I pretty much took, I did this whole um, Inktober thing with witches, so I had, I ended up going nuts, and I had like 36 witches. And so when I was done, I ended up taking them and turning them into fun advertisements and, you know, shops. It's, it's funny. It gets really goofy. So, um, we should turn some lights off. It'll help, I think. So. Perfect. Woohoo. I'm glad how we'll, we can see this so well. All right. So, making a coloring book in six easy steps, right? Some of these steps are much easier than others. Um, and then I hit enter to go to the next I think one. it's right or left. Step one, Aha! you're good at art. <laughs> that helps. Step one, you need an idea. Um, that is the hardest thing, I think, in deciding to do any project is getting an idea, figuring out how to make a cohesive idea and one that people are interested in. So I have a kind of a simple list here we'll go through in more detail. Um, I guess it's not simple since there's so many commas, but... <laughs> So the first one is fantasy creatures. These are very popular. Uh, there's, it's such a broad range. You can go fairies. My sister's working on a mermaid one right now. We'll see a little more of her art later. Um, it's, it's a fun one. We're going to kickstart that too. It has like an orca mermaid. It's, it's great. How cute. So I went and I tried to find as many uh, credits as I could. You can see the names underneath. It's really hard to find. This We'll cover this later too. It's, so many of these get published and republished and republished on everybody and their dogs' websites as, oh, free coloring pages to download, you know? So we'll talk a little bit about protecting your art in a minute. So here's another kind that's very popular, um, Geometrics. I've got Mandalas, um, Celtic Knotwork, uh, then you have like the animals. I love this kind of hide and seek. I actually have curtains that look a little bit like that. <laughs> little partridges. We have nature, and nature ranges all the way from the cartoony kind of uh, comic uh, stylized to you can get like those hyper realistic rose, uh, not roses, these, these right here. Oh, there are roses. Um, and then you can get the animals. This uh, Joanna Basford right there was one of the first who kind of made a huge splash in the color, adult coloring book. Uh, genre several years ago and she did these beautiful animals with with plants kind of and a whole bunch of other things it's gorgeous um, another one that I really like in nature are the uh, line drawings that are very scientific so you, if you feel like you're some kind of botanist or, or something going through and coloring the the flowers I love those it's another one I love. If you've heard of Dover, they've been doing coloring books forever. Um, this Tom Tierney one, he's done a lot of, of these coloring books. Uh, they have these beautifully detailed drawings of actual historic fashions. You see the more modern fashion ones there. Everyone likes coloring people and faces. They, they just do. And then I love the Chinese fashion. It's a... Uh, I have no idea how to say that name. I'm not even going to attempt it because I'll butcher it. And if anybody watches this on YouTube, I'll feel really dumb because I butchered it. <laughs> the other one, we got people and styles. Um, you can see the picture down at the, the bottom right <laughs> corner is the Arnolfini marriage by Van Eyck, I believe. Um, so the line drawings of classical art that's in the public domain, this is important, uh, famous people, um, styles like uh, this one is the Cubist style, doing doing faces in uh, traditional art styles or other um, other things like I guess Monet style, impressionist work. Uh, that's also a fun one. This is the one that I think is the most popular though, are the themed ones. Now here we have a superhero theme. We have horror, we have steampunk, and we have sci-fi with Legos. 
most of these I could not find any copyright, but when you are doing things like this, I have the little note here. Beware the copyright material. Um, I wanted to do a cosplay coloring book where I got the community, the local community, which is a fantastic cosplayers here in Utah, and then pick their their best cosplay and then turn that those pictures into a coloring book. I did a bunch of research finding out if I could legally, and the the idea was for this to be a big enough thing that those cosplayers could sell it themselves too, and we could do something cool. Uh, but because so many of the cosplays are proprietary people own those IPs we there was no way I could figure out to do that without getting in a lot of trouble or paying a whole lot of money so it didn't work out um, but steampunk I love because it's broad it's all open you can tell I have coloring books in it it is anything you can imagine it's huge um, I like these these beautiful fashion ladies my my books have a lot of stories they're short about um, the individual pictures which we'll talk about coming up here in step two I do love the beauty of horror that book it's it's it really is the beauty of horror it's got all these creepy things that are just so beautifully drawn that you can't help but like them so the step, step two, is we're going to have more discussion. That that per first part's kind of basic. Get your ideas, you know. Those are also the general categories that are the most popular on, like, Amazon. So, all right, planning your book. The first step, you need to know how many images you want to have in the book. Now, the first one I did, this one was only 12, because I liked the term 12 tales. It, it was fun, and I didn't want to do bite off something that I couldn't complete. So I have pictures like, you can see here, Sleeping Beauty and um, the little story I wrote for it. Um, but that only has 12. Uh, the second one I got braver, and I can't remember exactly how many pictures are in this one, but there are more. And then the uh, Madame Esmeralda has more, and the one I'm currently doing, my Witches at Work coloring book, has 37. Um, the the point of having more is the more pictures you have, the more quantity you have, the more you can sell the book for. I'm going to be selling these once I get them uh, all printed and ready, and I'm going to be selling them for fifteen dollars because thirty-seven pages of intricate uh, costume ad drawings is that's a pretty much the going rate. These are the two that I handed. I only sold for um, eight to ten dollars depending on where I was going. If there were a lot of kids, I made them cheaper. I also hand bound these, which I'll, I'll give you a little advice on that later. Um, the second thing we have is, am I telling a story? Now this goes into your themes. If you have, uh, say, you're going to do a book of your own superheroes, are you telling a story? If so, you want to put that those pictures in, in order. You remember the really cheap coloring books of our childhood that were like very simple pictures of dogs or whatever, and they were just so much empty space, and they had no kind of flow. It was just random all through the whole thing. Even when I was a kid, those bored me to death, just to death. So if you're telling a story, you can do this either like I have through pictures and words or just through pictures. Those, those picture books that don't have any words, I always loved as a kid, because you could just look through the picture and not get distracted by words. Words often distract me. So I can't watch um, subtitled anime because I won't watch the anime. I'll just be stuck and focused on the words. <laughs> and then we have pictures only or pictures and text. And will my images be simple or complex? So pictures only. We have one of my, one of my witches at work without her whole background. This is my alchemist witch. And then I also am working on for my YouTube channel, a series of doll remakes, um, the monster high and remaking the dolls. And this is my first one for the solar system. That one's Sola. She's, you know, the sun. Um, and I thought that would be fun to get outlines of all of those and do something with them. But this would just be, so the, the witch is going to have a little thing about her in the book, but for Sola, she's not 
I think it's just going to be these pretty, pretty line drawings, and that's going to be kind of what I have for that. But it's going to tell a story because it's following the solar system. Here is an example of the picture that is the most popular out of every picture I've done, and she's my favorite. This is Eslin, the Industrial Witch. And this is pretty much a, the two-page spread that you find in the Madame's, Madame Mesmeralda's Digest. She, uh, I also have a video up on my YouTube that has me narrating her story here. Uh, one of the reasons I do this and I like to do this is because I've actually sold coloring books on the story alone. A lot of people are like, oh, these are beautiful, but I don't color. And I say, well, they're stories through the whole thing. And that's, that sold them. This, this copyright, my little, it's really dark on this picture, but this is, this is what you have to do if you want to make sure people don't steal your pictures. It's just the way it is. And you want to match, if it's black and white, go black and white. It's harder to remove. So, yes, especially on Instagram. I'm posting for Witches at Work, by the way. <laughs> I'm just going to keep, you know, pimping this one out. But every day, because I'm doing prints every day, I guess this works too if, if you're selling. Every day I'm doing, I'm posting a picture, the full color version from the book. Um, and each one of those I have very definitely, um, in fact, you'll see a little later, I think, very definitely. Uh, watermarked and at the very bottom I also have the name of the picture and then the copyright symbol and my name and the year. Um, this does two things. One, helps protect it. Two, if somebody reposts that picture on Pinterest or anywhere else, the name of the artist and what it is is clearly on the picture so you don't end up like that last, like that dragon we saw, not knowing who did the art. So, I really love stories with the things. I think that very much adds to the to the whole idea. Even if they're only a few sentences or even like a little little jingly poem or something, that would be a lot of fun. So here we have my sister Amberly's art. Um, and I should say Amberly Berenson H. Um, and she has a lot of complex images, but mostly these are the ones that I think are the strongest for coloring books. These are her, this is her devil girl. And then you got the, the boy and the cat and it's just kind of cute and everything. These are much simpler. These are broader range when it comes to appeal to adults and kids. Um, and who doesn't love cats and babies? I mean, you're always gonna find an audience with that. You will also always find an audience for mermaids and fairies. I don't know why. Except that I'm a girl and I love those things, so maybe that's why. I don't know. But when I was a kid, it was all unicorns. Loved unicorns. I was that girl. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> I was that girl too. Okay, I feel better. <laughs> I was that girl too. Oh, that makes that me feel girl. a lot better. <laughs> See, unicorn shirt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, and then here are more examples of mine. These are both from the Madame Mesmeralda's Digest. Um, I have the spider spinners of Lutania. These are the ladies that live in the jungle. The, there's a whole jungle continent. Um, what happened? I mean, it's in the tropics. What are you going to do? But they have a symbiotic relationship with these giant spiders. They kind of bond to a spider. And then that spider is like their familiar or their companion. And the only ones that get giant are the ones who are bonded to a, to a person. Right, it's fun. Spiders are scary. Uh, that's why I, I want to do this. Okay. There's, well, this don't, one, don't, don't fear this the one has, Octo Kitty. <laughs> the Octo Kitty. This, one, this book has a lot more of the creepy things in it, which is why it has a skull on the front and a creepy doll head. Um, the other one... And I've never gotten permission, which is why I haven't publicized this one much. I would love to send it to him, but this is Professor Elemental's song, The Attic. Um, so it's like a hunt and seek. If you... I thought if that you, was, it looked yes. like, uh, where's Waldo? Yes. If you listen to the song, you'll find all these things. Like there's the ghost hand with the locket, and there's right the, the butler who uh, did bad things. And then there's the rat king and the mummified elf and the two-headed frog. These are all things that were from the song that I just fell in love with. Um, if you've never listened to any of Professor Elemental's work, I highly recommend it. 
he's awesome, and the songs are great. And he has one that's called Don't Feed the Trolls. It's wonderful. So here's what you get with the complex images. And these, a lot of people, it turns a lot of people off uh, because those who, who just want something big and simple to color, they don't like them as much. But the people who really are into the fiddly bits, and I know a lot, I'm into the fiddly bits, and a lot of people are and just love the fiddly bits, they, um, they enjoy these quite a bit. The, um, and I forgot to mention with the simple images, one of the things that, that I've done in the 12 Tales book, I don't think I put any of the pictures from this up, I left a lot more white space. And my other sister, I have too many sisters, um, really love this because she's into Zentangle. So she would get her fine tip colored pens and then fill like the dresses with Zentangle and do some fun things like that. So um, there, there are good reasons to leave some nice white space besides just, you know, artistic. Negative space is beautiful and everybody loves negative space. All right. And the next step, this is something that I see um, a lot that uh, bothers me a little is I've seen a lot of coloring books that have very poor line quality. Now what you're selling in a coloring book is your line quality. And this example, you can see, it's very simple. You can do this with your pens that are the same size, um, just very simple, same width through the whole thing. This is a vector art image, so you can see how clean and simple it is because they're made to be you know perfectly you know scalable so they can be tiny or huge um, these are these are good you get this a lot with digital art because it's it's easier to get your image completely you know uh, smooth in the same line width so are you using illustrator for your bacteria um i this one i actually pulled it from a clip art uh i want Publisher, or not publisher, it's uh, Illustrator. I want Illustrator so I can do vector images. I just don't want to pay another 20 bucks for it. <laughs> I have Photoshop, I can afford one. <laughs> but it's, it's good, especially if you're gonna work in logos or you wanna take any of your images and enlarge them for any reason, like making posters. My sister has, and if you look in the, I forgot to bring one, if you look in the, uh, dealer's room at my booth, you can see her giant posters of collector girls. And they have, it's another thing we have to be careful with on the copyright. She sells very small quantities to few people, but she has a collector girl that has just all monsters. This is another great theme idea, just all monsters. The other collector girl has all robots. And then she has one that's all Nintendo games and other games, which that one we have to be very quiet with. <laughs> but we're selling it so small scale. They'd waste so much money going after us. It, you know. At least I hope if this goes up, nobody hears that part. Uh, does a copyright law say you're allowed to include a product in? There are certain amounts. There's certain fair use clauses. Yes. I know there's the whole Barbie situation, obviously Campbell's Soup Can with Andy Warhol. Mm -hmm. There are certain bits you can get away with. I'm actually gonna have a panel on Saturday. Not a panel, a presentation about that on Saturday. Cool. So, um, and we'll talk a little bit about in this protecting your art there, avoiding copyright, and we'll talk a little bit about protecting your stuff here too. So these are the lines that I like the most, and these are when you look at high quality, beautiful traditional pen and ink art that everybody loves and has been popular for a hundred years. A lot of the time that they do is they use these very fine map making. Um, dip quill nibs that are soft enough, the metal's soft enough, you can start out just so tiny and then you push a little and you get these other lines. So if your coloring book is simple and you want to show off the lines, this is the best thing to do. There's also little tricks you can do. I end up changing my line width just by using wider pens and you can kind of roll to the side and change that. Um, I also, because I, <laughs> I shake a lot, I always have. So I brace my hand and then I, so doing like the nib pen is really hard for me. And then I make sure that, that I have support to do it. Um, 
and then I kind of fudge little bits. I kind of connect corners and and make things look all smooth and and flowy, which which is really nice. Um, they also do this with brushes. Brushes are a lot harder. <laughs> You've ever seen anyone doing kanji, you know just how amazing that work can look, but it's, it takes some practice. And then we have texture images. The texture images are very detailed, very complex with their little details, but they can be something as simple as fruit filled in with patterns. A lot of people that just want to lose lose their stresses and just color in little things and just kind of go all zen, filling in the little spaces, like these books a lot. Um, I find these, uh, they remind me of my sixth grade teacher who would print off all sorts of cool uh, mandalas and things like that, these tiny little things, and we'd get to color them for fun. And that was the whole reason to get colored pencils, because crayons just didn't cut it. <laughs> Most of these I like and I tell people, you want to get a cool coloring thing, go for colored pencils. There are a lot of good colored pencil brands and it's really hard to screw them up or have bleeding over into other spaces. So now we have step four. This is the fun stuff. This is when you get to uh, plan your layout and this is the stage when I have the most fun. So you can see down here at the bottom I have my witches at work. Um, cover and interior image, and then the big version of the Madame Mesmeralda's Digest. So the first thing you need to figure out is your title page and your introduction. Do you want an introduction? Do you want to say anything? I highly recommend a title page. It gives you an opportunity to add an extra picture that duplicates the cover. So here, the very first image in this coloring book is going to be the same picture from the front, so people can color that. <clears throat> and in past books, I have had introductions. So this one, I used a paper that you can color directly on the cover. So there's a picture on the cover to color, and then I did a specific index picture, or a table of context picture, since it was um, the fairy tales, it seemed right to have a, you know, a little, little chapter view thing, even though it's one page. Um, and then the little picture has little elements from all of them. And then I had my, my thanks page at the very end. Then table of contents we talked about. That's if you're telling a story that can be separated into pieces, that's a good thing to do. Uh, extra pages. I have in the past had a couple extra pages in the back. And that happens when you're getting it uh, bound when they have the fold. This is one thing I, I, I could go for an hour talking about book binding cause, and typography because I really love that subject. I'm kind of a font nerd. But um, one of the things you need to take into consideration, I made these so I didn't have to because I didn't want to. <laughs> these are all single sheets. Um, when you do the folding book, you have to make sure that your, your pages line up correctly. You also can't do so many that it bulges funny. Um, so you'll sometimes end up with extra pages if you don't have the right number. So you have to think of it in groups of four. That's another thing that's important to know when you're, when you're planning out your book. Yes? Quick question. How many pages are usually in a SIG? Um, I think the last time I talked to anybody about it, she said no more than eight, depending, eight to 12, depending on the thickness of the paper. Okay. Um, but you can kind of judge for yourself if it's going to sit flatter or if it's, you know. Because it seems ideal to keep it to one SIG. If you can. If you can, yes. Um, ideally, the best binding, and we're going to talk about this better, the best binding that people like the most for coloring books is a spiral. No, that's what I did on my Good idea. That's what I'm doing on my witches at work. So um, you need to decide if your coloring images are going to be double-sided or single-sided. Double-sided is a bad idea. I'll tell you right now. Um, and then you have to decide your, your picture order. The best thing to do, and, and psychology studies have been done, people remember the first and the last of things. So you want to put your best picture and your best pictures at the front and at the back. So when people are flipping through a book, they're going to they're gonna get the back, see people flip, they're going to see the back ones, and then they go here and they see the front ones. 
and a lot of the ones in between kind of are blurred, you know, they forget them. So if they're just browsing, you want this. Yes? Um, why is double-sided bad? Double-sided is bad because if people use markers, they ruin the back picture. And people like using markers the most because they're so bright and vibrant and cheap. I, I only say that because my coloring works, I did double-sided, but I did Pokemon. So I did the first generation mm -hmm. and 151 Pokemon, like that was going to be a lot. So oh, I, yeah. it was already thick enough to just double sided. <laughs> yes, so, that is. Um, that, I mean, it works if you, if you use heavier paper, you can get away with some of that. But if you're using Sharpies or something that, um, that soaks into the paper that much, it's it's gonna be, you're gonna kind of, somebody's gonna lose half of the images. So let me see my notes and make sure I've got this. Oh, so okay. uh, Madame Esmeralda's is printed double-sided, but it's the picture on one yeah, side. Yeah, we covered and that. And the story on the other. Well, well yeah. Well. Anyway, um, planning your cover and binding. So, this is where I, I put my notes for, you know, the first page is is often the, the black and white version of the cover image. Um, <clears throat> so, the flat binding is cheaper. This is called perfect binding. It's cheaper, but when you, you run into it not wanting to bend, and when it does, it'll crack and the glue will crack, especially in places like here where it's a drier environment, you run into that problem. The nice thing though, if you want a, pa a book where people can pull the pages out easily, this one, they crack it open enough and they come out easily. I didn't like that fact, but you know, it was an experiment. My very first ones, I did homebound. And you can see there's the fashionable elite of St. Augustine. Um, then I've had uh, some that are wraparound. See, this one is wraparound, so this is what you do with like perfect binding because it has a little space for the binding. So it's a whole image that goes around. The Inky Witches, my first Inky Witches one, which is the predecessor to the Witches at Work, I did spiral bound and I only did like 10 copies. And they cost me 10 bucks each, which was crazy and I need to find a better place to get that done. But um, that one, I just was able to have two separate images, one for front and one for back, which was easier. So I'm going to give you a little little note on my my uh, my home binding. So we live in Scrapbook Central. You can get all sorts of cardstock, and they they close them out for really cheaper. You go when they have the 50% coupon. This is actually 12 by 12 cardstock. And um, what I did is I have all sorts of trimmers. I cut it down so that I would get just this little, little extra lip. So it's what? It's like, what? It's eight and a half for this page size. So I cut about a nine inch, um, a nine inch wide, 11 inch tall. Uh, then what I did, and you can see from the back here, there are staples. So I had that flap sitting up here. And then I had a good stapler that could cut or staple through several sheets, and I just gave it staples all the way across. I used five. It was a good number to keep anything from bowing out. And then I just went and glued this flap over the top and put a little, a little ribbon thing for fun, you know, a little yarn. Uh, this is a good way to do something smaller that you don't want to spend a lot of money because all you have to do is pay for all the copies. You could use your own printer, but the consistency you're going to get with a copy machine and the dark lines um, is a lot better, especially if you have an inkjet printer, they're gonna bleed with water or um, um, the liquid ink, they're gonna bleed. Water, even some pens. I have a, a pigment ink inkjet printer, and that one I've tested a bunch, and you can put water, pour water on it, you can pour alcohol on it, and it doesn't bleed because the ink is actually in the paper, soaks into the paper. I highly recommend them if you're gonna print your own work. Yes? So if you're going to print your own work and you have a laser printer, would you recommend just buy some nice, thick, weight paper? Yes, I would go, um, so 25 pound, 20 pound to 25 pound is kind of the basic copier paper. That's the thin stuff. There are a lot of cool things you can do with it, but eh, I like it's good for copies. Pound for anything I'm 70 pound is a good weight. Anywhere between, you know, 
35 and you know up to cardstock weight is a good a good thing 25 can even work if you're only doing one-sided that that works pretty well so i have never quite understood that the whole thing with the, the pounds of the paper. What is that? The pound is if the, when they take a huge ream of paper, they get the whole thing and they fill up the, the, box. the box. Yeah, the box. How much does that box weigh? That box, depending on how much that box weighs, if it's a twenty five pound, then that box weighs twenty five pounds. Gotcha. So that's how they that's how they give you that okay. that number. This is another typography book binding class nerd thing. <laughs> Is it six or eight to a box? I can't remember. I can't remember e either. It's eight? Yeah, I think eight. I think. <clears throat> I remember the important bits and the other yeah. bits. I, it, <laughs> it's, you know, <laughs> some things drift off. So here's one of, now this is step six. This is the easy part. <laughs> yes? Well, what was the other Wait, you said 75 pounds? 75 pounds is kind of the top I would go for, for the coloring pages, and then 35 is, is a good low number. So um, this has one of the pictures from my upcoming Witches at Work, so that you can see the kind of in this, ver these ones, I've, I've kind of gone between the really detailed and the really simple to kind of give a, a mixture. But now there's the hard part, you got to draw it. All of these witches I drew in 2016 during Inktober, one a day, because I was crazy. But they turned out so well, I wanted to do something with them. So having a couple years in between to be able to get that work done is, is a nice thing. Yes, easy step. And where do you recommend like doing copies and stuff? Because I just went to a local copy center and just had them what was that place? I talked to one of my friends, one of my friend artists in the dealer's room, and um, Kellyanna Taylor, she was just working on stuff. She has, if you're local, she went to a place called um, yeah, Minuteman. Minuteman. Yeah, Minuteman. It's in Orem. She said they do great work, and they gave her a good deal. I was going to recommend them. They're, yes. That is the best place I've gone for printing. That's where I think I'm going to go for this. Minuteman. Um, Minuteman. Uh, you can go places even like Alpha Graphics, which if you're making a metric ton, you get a little, it, it's more, you know, affordable. But if you're getting one or two or even like a hundred, it gets really expensive there. This is your fourth printing of your most popular book and you're going to sell thousands of copies of it. Yeah. Alpha Graphics is fine. Yeah. Or if, if you, it's Not something that you need to, if you're going to go across the country and you run it to a con and you run out of coloring books, you can, you know, use Alpha Graphics anywhere. They're everywhere. So next we're going to go on, once you got it all colored and all put together, we need to do the publishing and advertising. And this is the hardest part. I started my Witches at Work um, Kickstarter last year in October, and it, it didn't go through. Um, I decided I wanted to put a, a coloring book with it, and that, or not a coloring book, an art book with it, and it just didn't make enough to, to fund that. But Kickstarter is a great place to go if you want to just get a whole bunch printed. Because uh, you get people who want half of them, they love it, they start following you. Uh, downloadable in an online shop is a good option. Like you have an Etsy shop, you can say, hey, this is a downloadable pack. Um, on The Witches at Work, I'm actually doing a five pack of the pictures I like and I think people like the best that is a downloadable printables, we're calling them. So people can print out as many as they want and do them over and over again. Create space. Now, I love create space. I have um, the Inky Witches, the original Inky Witches, and no, I think it's Madame Mesmerilda's Digest. I have this on Create Space. You pretty much set it up, set up your account, and walk away. Amazon does all the work. And it's regional printing. So if somebody wants to buy this in, say, Italy, then it's priced and shipped with the European prices because they print it in, in Europe. Yes? Um, have you used Spark for colored books? I have not. I just need to look into that one. Because I've been using that recently, and I found that the image quality from Spark is way better than Create Space. Create Space yeah, I'm not. Things look grainy. Yeah, I'm not too happy with that. I'm gonna have to have to look that one up. Also, for shorter books, it tends to be cheaper to buy author copies than from Create Space. Oh, that's good. So yeah, I I don't buy entirely over to Ingram Spark. I, I don't buy my own copies from Create Space. They they get expensive. I. 
I, I'll go to a, I'll go to like Miniman and print a few, you know. Um, in fact, the the books of these that I have in the dealers room right now are the last that I have of all three of these. So they've almost I've almost sold all of them. Um, that some of these I've had for four years. So uh, so CreateSpace is wonderful because it's connected to Amazon and you can walk away and every three months or so I get like five bucks to twenty bucks to you know and I, I'm not doing anything. It's just there. Um, then publish it yourself. You would do by uh, getting your own copies, putting it together yourself. That works very well, especially if you want to add your own personal flair, like the little yarn bits or anything like that. Um, so crowdfunding, you need big time advertising, big time. Um, there are a lot of resources on how to do it online, like telling you, okay, what are the best months to do a um, crowdfunding project on Kickstarter, which would it show the best months of the year, which are the worst. Uh, the, uh, some of the things that I've done that have, that have helped and worked really well. We're gonna go to the next one. Uh, the next one, so here are advertising options. I love my Instagram. I have gotten a lot of, of people involved through Instagram and liking things through Instagram. Um, this is one of the ads that I did for the, the one Kickstarter that failed. Uh, making your own visual ad is very important. But we'll go down the list. First, you can get pay ads like uh, Google AdSense. Uh, you can buy ads with Facebook, uh, things like that. Um, I've gone to blogs, to different blogs. And uh, let's see, there are, there's a YouTube vlog called Coloring in the Dark, and she's reviewed, reviewed two of my books. I had no idea she did. I looked up my name, found him, and went, because ah! uh, she liked the book, and I was very excited. Shout out. No. <laughs> um, another blog that I like is the Coloring Book Addict. And some of, the, some of them aren't very active, so you need to check and see if they're still active or not. Um, but I have had uh, them um, review my book. A lot of them are like, well, send me your book and I'll review it. And, and that's a good thing to do because a lot of these people have already, all these people who want to color and are looking for new books. It's a good investment. Um, let's see. The other thing you want to do is when you have, uh, when you have it on something like um, Amazon or any of those places, beg, borrow, steal for reviews. If you're on Amazon, you live and die by reviews. You need people to give you reviews. Preferably positive reviews. <laughs> Get your family and friends who've watched you make this coloring book and have them go and uh, do it and make sure they do it. You know, step on them until they do <laughs> if you need to. Uh, it makes a huge difference in it getting found and it getting bumped up to the top of the list. Mm -hmm. Does it make a difference if the reviews are very high purchase or not? Not in my experience. Okay. So, I mean, it, for certain items it would, but not really for coloring books. Okay. So. Cool. Um, I wasn't sure if that was different between coloring books and books. I mean, if it's, yeah. Um, and on Etsy, any shop where you're selling it, very important. Um, your own videos, that's another thing. Like, I, I do the videos with the stories. I have a bunch more to do, the, but now that they changed... Microsoft dropped their movie maker. I don't know what I'm doing anymore, but I'm taking the pictures, showing the process, and putting them with the narration on YouTube. And I've had a lot of people, well, I have six followers. <laughs> so with three videos, six followers, I'm very happy. Um, don't expect to make a lot of money or much money on YouTube. Everybody I know who is active on YouTube also have to have a Patreon to support their what they're doing but it is a great advertising tool and it's free to post a video so um so social medias let's see we got reviews youtube social medias uh, a lot of these are hit and miss because if you don't have an audience people aren't seeing it so i post on facebook and only the the 50 or so people who actively watch my facebook list are seeing this uh, if you want more, you'd have to pay for Facebook ads, which I've tried and never seemed to help at all. Especially when you have art that is kind of really sp 
specific and niche like I do, you know, it's it's difficult. But um, hashtags help. Oh yeah, like on Instagram. On Instagram, it makes a huge difference. I um, I keep a list of hashtags yep. for specific people that mm-hmm. I know are looking for it. Oh yeah, I keep a list. My biggest audience is on. Oh yeah, on my um. The Witches at Work, I have a, a file where they're all listed out, and I have everything, their story, the blurb that goes on smaller places like DA, the um, all of the keywords and hashtags that might apply to it. I keep all of those things um, in one file. And then on my phone, I make sure, like I said, I have the watermarked and uh, titled version on my phone. Now this time around, I'm not doing full images. I'm kind of closing it, getting close on some of the parts that are cool on Instagram, and then just making sure that I hashtag everything. Uh, on Kickstarter, what I'm doing, since I'm doing prints and I have 37 of them, uh, I thought it would be best if I ran the Kickstarter for 37 days. Now that's a whole other thing you can get into online is what people have for advice on that. Um, but I'm going 37 days so that I can post one of the colored pictures each day. So when it's time for people to go and say, well, which prints do I want? They can look through all of the the updates and pick them out. Um, that's just a side note. But the, the thing I love about Instagram is you can post to the three other most popular places, Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook and you just have to do it once and then you hashtag it to death and if you're doing a kickstarter get the address i love the kickstarter app get the address for your thing and post it in your message now they can't click on it in a in instagram which vexes me a little bit but when you post it to facebook and anywhere else they can copy paste and go go there that's very important put the link everywhere um one of the fun things, I have all sorts of tags that I've done. Some of them are just funny, so that if people read them, they're just silly and funny. But I have in one of the witches is a warrior witch. And so I wrote warrior and warrior woman, and I got this MMA fighter following me. <laughs> it's, it's you know, um, not professional, below that. So we pro. But yeah, and <laughs> that was cool. And I don't think I would have ever gotten that if I hadn't put in those tags. Um, And then I have a lot of uh, pagan and and Wiccan uh, people following me because of all the witch tags. And they really, they they brighten my day. I love pagans. How does Homer say that? God bless those pagans. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So um, free downloads is also another popular thing to offer. You can offer that, oh, go do this and you get this free download. Or or like this and I'll send you a free download. Yes? What do you usually use for a free download? Um, I like the download system on uh, DeviantArt or the Etsy where you can, um, but people have to purchase that one. You can make it really cheap. You know, hey, get five for a dollar. Uh, house helps cover, you know, your work and the value of your work. But Etsy has a very good download uh, product option. Um, on Amazon, and I've got this option, you can have them put to Kindle, but I don't necessarily see the point of putting your coloring book on Kindle. I don't know. I don't know if you can color on Kindle, but that's that's something else you can do. If you have stories and people just want the stories, maybe they'll buy it. So, but free downloads is one of the things that I'm giving for people who uh, don't want to pay very much on and but want to support. I have the one dollar bid where people can say, "Hey, thanks. I want you to continue doing this," and then I put their name in the book. Um, and then the $5 bid and up, everybody gets the five free download printables. These little things add up and people really like them. It makes them happy and happy is good. So the five free download printables, is that every month or is it per month? It's just one, one, one set. You can do reoccurring ones um, on my Patreon, which I haven't touched in months because it stresses me out, but well, you know. So, oh, the life of mental illness. It's great. But uh, on there, I was putting up uh, one free picture for people who were uh, like a dollar and up would get one free downloadable picture. 
to, to color as many times as they want. That's little little things like that. Patreon's also another great place to offer those kind of things, especially when you retire a coloring book, offering it exclusively through something like that is a good thing. So now we're at the end. Enjoy your hard work because if it doesn't make you happy, what's the point? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so and I'm pretty sure anybody who wants to draw a coloring book can't really stop because it gets kind of compulsive. <laughs> I couldn't stop being an artist no matter what happened, no matter how hard it was, which is good. Does anybody have any questions? Any more questions? I've noticed that anything that I see is like, oh, I can make that a coloring <laughs> Right? It, it gets that way. You just start focusing in on, oh, hey, that would be fun to color. Oh, that would be fun to color too. And then I have this giant list. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you finding more success by doing this, like, kind of a self-publishing kind of route than maybe going to a traditional publisher? Or it saves money. It saves money when you do it yourself, but then you have only where you take it to sell it or Etsy, an online shop, which... If it doesn't, I mean, yeah. yeah. If you're a, bl you're just a blade in the gra of grass in the golf course on the internet, and that's where advertising helps. That's why I love Amazon. Like I said, I just walk away. And the printing might not be the best. I need to look into that. What was it called? Emily, what Ink was Spark. the Ink Spark? Ingram Spark. Ingram, Ingram yeah, Spark. You, okay. Okay, so they charge money to set up titles which is why I wasn't willing to for a while because uh -huh. it's like $25 and then they want another $25 every time you make a revision which is dumb right yeah but they wow. have regular coupons like three or four times a year where you get free set ups and free revisions ah. so wait until they have a month with free setups and then it's much cheaper like for a short book, mm -hmm. I have found that I'll usually pay. Well, Amazon, you you you'll pay two fifteen, and then you uh -huh. got postage, so it's two seventy six total for me. On Ingram Spark, it, the prices go down below two fifteen for a very short book, and so you wind up paying more. Like, say, for a thirty page book, you'll pay a dollar fifty. I'll see. That's and pretty good. And the postage costs also are not exactly the same depending on. You know, in CreateSpace, it's a flat fee for postage, yeah. no matter what the weight. Mm -hmm. In Spark, you will pay way more for postage for thick books and way less for thin books. That helps for coloring books because exactly. they're usually not nearly as heavy. So for my picture book, for my chapter books and so forth, I I use Ingram Spark and I wind up paying, instead of 276 total, everything mm -hmm. factored in, I wind up paying about $2. Cool. which is actually slightly cheaper than what I would get printing it myself. And that's the thing. Make sure that you do your research because you can find, you know, and talk to people. Like, I didn't know about Minutemen, and now I'm going to go use them. Talk to people who've done it, you know. The Internet is, is full. Don't be afraid to search for people. Everybody's excited to help share what they've learned with people so the internet's full of people helping it's a wonderful place it's my favorite thing about the internet you may get garbage but you also get wonderful wonderful things and people so I'm gonna knock my water over it's great so that's the show that's what i got and i think i actually did pretty good time wise oh my yes. goodness <laughs> thank you everyone